What's up you guys? It's Michaela. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my experience going to field school. So if you guys don't know what field school is, they are a company that is based out of Miami, Florida, and they hold courses on shark research, spermo research, and I believe marine tropical research, if I'm correct. So I know I had a lot of questions coming in on my Instagram DMs about field school, so I figured I would make a video talking about everything we did and just my experience with it. So if you see me looking down, I have all of my notes on my computer, but let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with the basic info about field school, like I said, they are based out of Miami, Florida. Field school is a seven day program, and if I remember correctly, the cost was around $2,300 plus flights, but I was lucky enough for my mom to help me out with the flights, so I paid around $2,300. And I did their intro to shark research. Field school offers scholarships throughout their courses and they offer partial and full scholarships. And I was lucky enough to actually win a partial scholarship, so I did get a little help with my fees. People who run field school are the nicest people ever. You have Jake, who is a master's graduate from University of Miami. You have Dr. Catherine, Dr. Julia, who are also masters, and I believe they actually have their PhDs, because duh, they're doctors. And you have Nick and Christian, who are the two boat captains. Field school, you actually get to sleep on the boat, and I think for one night you go out and anchor in the ocean and you actually sleep on the ocean. But unfortunately, the weather was pretty bad while I was there, and we just had to stay in the marina every night. Now, getting into my program specifically, I went March 2nd through March 8th of 2020, which I'm so glad I picked those dates because that was right before this whole coronavirus thing happened, so I got super lucky. The day your program starts, they let you come on the boat at 11 a.m. I actually had to take a red eye flight the night before, so I left March 1st at 10.30 p.m. from LAX and I landed in Fort Lauderdale because it was so much cheaper than flying to Miami International Airport, but I landed in Fort Lauderdale at like 5.45 and I wasn't allowed on the boat until 11 a.m. So I sat in the airport for so long, it felt like an eternity. But you best believe once 11 a.m. hit, I was standing at the dock waiting for them to let me on the boat. And after that, everyone else slowly started coming. So. A normal group, they told us, is typically around 12 students, and my group had four. So it was me, a girl named Amy, a guy named Sebastian, and another girl named Wanda. And Sebastian and Wanda were actually from Puerto Rico, so it was really cool to get to learn about their culture throughout the week. Once everyone got on the boat, we had lunch, and this was one of the only days we had hot lunch. Most of the days were sandwiches for lunch, so if you don't like sandwiches, this probably isn't the program for you. After lunch, we ended up going snorkeling in the seagrass mangrove area, and that was a really fun experience because I don't get to experience stuff like that at home. We don't have anything like that in the Pacific Ocean. We were actually snorkeling for yellow rays, but we unfortunately didn't find any, but we did find moon jellies giant sea hares, and pufferfish. We were in the water snorkeling around 45 minutes to an hour, and what was super funny is the water was around 73 degrees. Now, if you're from California, you know that is super warm for California, but apparently that is freezing cold to Floridians and Puerto Ricans, and they didn't even want to go in the water. They were like, oh my god, this is freezing, and I was like, this feels great. I don't know what you people are talking about. But after we finished snorkeling, we came back and we showered, and we had a knot tying lesson, which came in handy because since I am a deckhand on a boat, I know how to tie up a boat now. And that was followed by a lecture on shark handling. Day two is where the real fun began. So we got up and we had breakfast at 8 a.m. And every single day without failure, we had scrambled eggs and cereal for breakfast. After breakfast, we got changed, put on sunscreen, and left for drum lining. If you guys don't know what drum lining is, it's just basically a giant weight that has a hook attached to it 
and it can swivel around the weight so the shark can basically swim in circles and then there's a giant fishing line that's connected to a buoy. Originally supposed to set in 30 drum lines but we ended up putting in 40 because we weren't catching anything but on our ninth line we caught a black tip shark. It was our first shark of the trip and everyone was super excited and funny story about this shark me and Julia were actually talking about how rare a recaptured shark is and obviously if you catch a shark you can tell whether it's a new shark or a recapture because they do tag all of their sharks so obviously if it's a recapture it will already have a tag and she was telling me how rare a recapture is and it's probably between like a one and two percent chance of them getting one and they brought up the shark and sure enough what was it a recapture so I just thought that that was super funny because we were literally just talking about that like two minutes ago I got to take a skin biopsy of the black tip shark and I had no idea sharks skin was so thick it was basically kind of like a circular scalpel and you had to go like this to get it through the skin and once you punctured the skin you are gonna hear kind of like a popping sound and you have to kind of like do the ice cream scooping until you get some muscle and you have to pull it out this is how they described it this isn't my wording. After our first shark, everyone was super pumped and super excited. With every shark you bring up to work up on the boat, there are four tasks that need to be done. That is measurement, fin clip, biopsy, and tagging. So since there were four tasks and four students in my group, everyone got to do an activity on the shark, which is why I am so glad we had a small group because they said if it's a big group of 12, some kids don't get to touch the shark at all. We came back to the dock and I actually took like a two hour nap because I was so exhausted from just not sleeping well on the plane, not sleeping at all in the airport, and not sleeping well the first night on the boat. And during my nap, I hear someone knocking on my little like cabin door and it's Julia and she's like, hey Michaela, um, just, just letting you know that we actually have two yellow rays that Christian found. So Christian, like I said, is one of the captains. He was walking on the marina and in the shallow side of the marina he actually found two yellow rays so he ran back to the boat to grab a net ran back to the place where he saw the yellow rays hopped in the water scooped them out and put them in a bucket and brought them back to the boat for us to work up and what was super cool about the first yellow ray is it was actually another recapture the same four procedures go for yellow rays as sharks so the only difference is instead of tagging them like a physical tag you actually use a microchip just like you would on a dog and I got to take a fin clip off of the yellow ray. After that, we ate dinner. Let me tell you, Jake is the best cook I have ever seen, hands down. Those boat dinners are better than what I eat at home that I make myself. After dinner, we ended the night with a lecture in shark biology and ecology. So day three started a little bit different. We had our usual eggs and cereal and we started the day with lecture on shark diversity and we did the lecture in the morning because we ended up doing another activity at night which I will talk about and this day was super interesting because we were originally supposed to go gill netting if you guys don't know what gill netting is it's basically you get a giant net you go walk it out to the water set it down and do frequent snorkel checks there's no bait in the net so it is whatever just happens to swim and get caught in the net but unfortunately, one of our starter batteries blew up. Everyone jumps and got scared shitless and we're like, what the heck was that? And so the photographer on our boat lifted the engine room door and he was like, um, I'm not professional, but I don't think there's supposed to be smoke. So they're like, everyone like get off the boat, get off the boat. So we had to evacuate the boat. And then they told us that the end of the starter battery blew up, which means can't start the boat, which means we can't go anywhere, which means we can't go gill netting. But that ended up being fine because they did allow us to have a beach day. So we drove across the street to the beach and we actually got to do some seine netting. Seine netting is essentially almost the same as gill netting. It's two people, one on each side. You stick the bottom half of the net in the sand and you start walking and pulling it. And after however amount of time that you want it in the net, you scoop it up and you basically just see whatever you have in your net. We actually found some really cool species in the net. We found a queen conch shell, a seahorse, and a larvae of a mahi-mahi fish. And no one knew what it was and no one could figure it out. But one of the Puerto Rican students sent it to their professor down in Puerto Rico and they were like, oh, it's this. And we were like, oh, okay, cool. After seine netting, we went back to the marina, showered, ate dinner, and we actually got to help one of the interns because the 
forgot to mention this, but the boat has interns as well that get college credit and just get work experience. So those guys were all super cool and I'm actually still friends with one. But we ended up getting to help one of the interns with her master's project and she was working up baby nurse sharks, but unfortunately we didn't catch any. Thursday, day four was the first day of long lining. If you guys don't know what long lining is, it's basically you have a giant rope. I don't even want to try and guess how long it was and you get these tuna clips that are attached to some fishing line and a hook and you start sticking them on the long line. Those tuna clips are the worst thing I have ever seen in my entire life. To squeeze and open them, I needed a glove by the end of the week because my hands were covered in blisters. <laughs> what was cool about long lining is it was super super quick. So drum lining like we did on day two, by time you put number one in, it was an hour until you went to go pick it back up. It, by the time you finished one and got to 10, it was already time to go pick up one. So it was like constant, like go, 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 go. With long lining, it was so quick to set out because there were only 22 hooks on one long line. It took four minutes to put one set of hooks out and we ended up putting two sets of hooks out. So. 44 hooks, 22 hooks on each long line, two sets of long lines, if that makes sense. And it was the same policy, an hour from when number one went in, you circle back around and you come get number one. So we had pretty much like 40 minutes to just sit and do nothing. So an intern, Taylor, and one of the Puerto Rican students, Sebastian, and I played so many rounds of Uno and Go Fish and they got pretty intense. This day was one of my favorites because we actually saw Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. If you guys know me by now, you should know that I am going to school to become a marine mammologist. So seeing another species of cetaceans that I don't see at home was at the top of my highlights list from this trip. If I remember correctly from this day of long lining, we caught one bonnet head. I'm not 100% sure Thursday or Friday what species we caught and how many because I forgot to take notes But I know we did catch at least one bonnet head this day same procedure as the black tip You bring it up on board you work it up and you set it back into the ocean and we actually I think our fastest work up was under four minutes So that's pretty good after that we came back to the marina showered ate dinner and ended the day with a lecture on blood drawing and sharks and we actually got to participate in Jake's project. He is the one who extracts the blood from all the sharks we work up and we got to remove the plasma and separate everything and it was really, really cool. However, it did teach me that I do not like working in a lab and I would much rather do field work. Now we're on to Friday. Friday was a really fun day. We started the morning doing breakfast, obviously, and we did a little career circle. So Catherine, Jake, Christian, and Nick came and sat with us in a circle. Unfortunately, Julia got strep throat on day two, so she wasn't able to join us on the rest of the week. We missed her, but we did have a really cool career circle. So we basically just went around telling everyone what our goal is, what we're in school for, like blah, 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 blah. And they basically gave us some advice and some tips and tricks they used while looking for a master's program and a PhD program. And at the end, they told us that if we ever need any references or have any questions, that we are always welcome to email them. So that was really nice. And they did say a lot of encouraging words. After that, we actually went night long lining. That's kind of a tongue twister if you try and say it fast. And it was super cool and they did nighttime because you see different creatures at night because some come out in the per percust percustrous, hold on, I'm gonna find it. Crepuscular, that's the word. We are looking for animals that are active at dawn and dusk, which are crepuscular. I believe we caught one black tip shark on the night long on the night long lining set. We are at Saturday already. I can't believe the week is pretty much over. But Saturday, we started with breakfast and we went long lining yet again. And on this day, we caught two bonnet heads. And I feel really bad because one of them was so small that we couldn't tag it. And I was the one tagging it. And so I was doing everything right, but they told me that the bonnet head was just so small. And I practically butchered his little like fin area where we put the tag and I still feel really bad. Sorry, Sharky. He reassured me that I didn't really do anything wrong, just some sharks are too small to be tagged. Tonight we actually went in town for dinner, so Jake did not make us his gourmet meals. This restaurant called Burger Locals with a Z, I think. 
If, I, if I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen somewhere. But I actually tried alligator and what's really weird is I didn't know that that was a normal thing in Florida. But now that I think about it, like they have a lot of alligators so that seems normal. But I give it like a 6 out of 10. It tasted like chicken, which I liked the taste. But it, it had the texture of fish. And I do not like the texture, anything about fish. And I... Mm -mm. It was a no from me. The taste was good, texture was no. So Sunday we got up at 6 a.m., had breakfast, and went early morning long lining again to find crepuscular species. We caught two black nose sharks and I was super excited because that was a species we didn't see on any of our other days. After we came back from long lining, we did kind of like a goodbye since this was our last day. And me, Taylor the intern, and Sebastian all went to the local like bar that was right outside the marina to play more Go Fish. And we sat there, ate food, and played Go Fish for I think two or three hours until Sebastian had to catch his plane and I went to my hotel since I was not flying out until the morning after. That was my experience attending Field School's shark research course. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you guys have any further questions about Field School, please either DM me on Instagram or comment them down below and I will have no problem answering them. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!